Good afternoon, Truth Wins team. Good to be back with you again. <gasps> Have you been poisoned? Have you been poisoned? <gasps> Whoa. We Whoa. better take care of business here. We better take care of business here. So before right. we take care of business here, we'll say a quick prayer. And we thank you, Father, for your presence involved in this production today. We thank you, Father, that we cast out all the demons that's tried to stop us throughout our lives and in our future life. We thank you, Father, for our your, your revelation, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding that we know your word and we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in everything we do. We seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. We are kings and priests before God and we glorify you in everything we do. We ask this now in the name of Jesus, and we all said, Amen. 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 So um, today we're going to be teaching uh, once again the Word of God, because that's where we learn everything. It's not our opinion, what our aunt said, what our cousin said. It's not what I said. It's yeah, not what or religious you spirits. said or anybody said. We're going to just go see what uh, the Holy Spirit instructed men to do and what the Holy Spirit had to do. So off with our first uh, scripture. It says in Romans 8, 11 in King James Version, But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. In Strong's Greek definition, it says to vitalize, literally or figuratively, may make alive, give life, and quicken. And the usage in King James Version is quicken, give life, and make alive. Right, so if we look at that, it's saying that when you get born again, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead comes to dwell in your body. So... If you feel like you're getting something, we know if the quickening, quickened Jesus from the dead. It quickening, back, I love that. Brought him back to life. Then if we have anything going on in our body, we have the same spirit dwelling in us, quickening our body. So going back to the, the title, if you feel like something's poisoned you, it could be lots of ways if you were bitten by a snake if you drank something or you that given wasn't a good, shot given a shot that's not good or if you have bad food anything you just pray that the same spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in you and quickens your mortal body and we'll go on to some more scriptures that talk about that like, gives you the power that gives you the power to stand on the word because when we put on our whole armor the sword is the sword of the word of God. It's the word of God. So that's what we're going to use. So let's see what else it has to say. Because we have, if, no, so far nobody's written to us saying, no, God sometimes goes, no, you're meant to be sick. Even, yeah, we're going to make you sick. Even with the one. And we can't pray for you because we God's making you sick. So we should pray you're sick if God wants yeah, you sick. Yeah, we need to pray you sick if pray that's the case. Sick, like, oh Lord, you want him sick, we want him oh, sicker. We want him, we want him sick because we're doing the word of God. We want him sicker. If that's what you want, we want him as but sick I'd as But I'd like everybody be. to look and find where that's in the Bible. Yeah, thank goodness. The Father loves us. That's not yeah. in the Bible. So he's not asking that. So He's saying, hmm, or what is he saying? Let's see what else he has to say. Yeah, it says that Isaiah 53 in the King James Version. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now that's Jesus, talking about Jesus. And in the Young's translation, or literal translation, and he is pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his bruise, there is healing for us. Right. So it, it's healing. It, it's all talking about healing. There's, there's not scripture that says, and he was bruised so we would become sicker. And he or it, he wasn't <laughs> bruised for our spiritual. It's all physical. Right. It's physical, not spiritual. 
Right, so we're going to go on to our next scripture because we're really trying to bring the point home. And it's not us saying it. It's what's written in the Bible. It's what God's saying to you. Go look it up in your own Bible. Go look it up in your own Strong's Concordance and see that that is actually what it says. It's not what we're telling you. It's what the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are telling you. Amen. It says in Matthew 8, 16 through 17, Many healed in the evening. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Right, so here if you look at um, what's on the screen, it's in Strong's Concordance. We just took a picture of it and put it up here. So if you went to your Strong's, you could see it, what the Greek says the word is for infirmities. And it says feebleness of body or mind. So when Paul had his infirmity, which came from Satan, which was an angel came and he had like an infirmity, like his mind could have been stressed because of all the things that were happening. He was beaten. He was bitten by a snake. It took care of that part, but it also takes care of um, all your diseases. So Mental. Mental and physical. All diseases, all sickness. So what he's saying is on the cross, basically when Jesus was on the cross, we'll flip back to you so we can teach you a little on it. And you can look at it yourself. You can go back and read what Strong said. Is on the cross, It's he was he did it, so it's done. So when you look at... Isaiah, it says you are, and when you look at Second Peter, it says you were. So, right, and also I want to imply that in Matthew, he's quoting Isaiah 53, 5. Right, so it, it's a the part that took care of, he was wounded for our transgressions. So the wounding of him, our transgressions are our sins. Yes, he made us right back to the same way that Adam and Eve were before they sinned. He, he is the propitiation for our sins. So that is taken care of. But he wants to bring us back to completeness, to wholeness. And so all the other parts of Isaiah occur and are done. So we're going to go on to our next scripture. And that's 1 Peter 2.24, the Young's Literal Translation. Who are sins himself did bear in his body upon the tree that to the sins having died, to the righteousness we may live by whose stripes we ye were healed. Right, and here again we're showing you the, what the Strong's Concordance says for the word healed. And it would be the Greek 2390, um, and it's saying to cure, literally, or figuratively, to heal, make whole. Make whole is what it is, or heal. So you wouldn't... We didn't, when he came, well, we'll go on and we'll talk to you. So we'll come back. When he died on the cross, we became, when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, our spirit becomes a new creation. So it's not a healing spiritually. We don't need to be healed spiritually. Yeah, we, we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Right. He didn't, he didn't give us a healed spirit. Spirit. He, he yeah, we don't spirit. have the same spirit. Right. So we, have we had a, a dead spirit. Then he gave us a new spirit. Right, a new creation, and then the healing, then what's left is our body and our soul, soul which is which our are, mind. Did not take, nothing changed right. in that case. Right, when we were born again, and so we are required to do something about that, and right. how we do it is through do, the Word of God. Yeah, it says that we need to, what does it say? It says to uh, make it better. <laughs> there is a scripture there I'm trying to remember. Uh what? I don't you know knew, which one you're thinking I'm of. thinking of, you know, do your do your due do, do diligence don't to make your soul right. and Renew work your in your body through your spirit. But right. your new spirit will give you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation in order that your mind lines up with your spirit and your body will line up with your soul and your spirit. Right. So we sow the word into ourselves by speaking it because that's how God created it. With Remember, we've done quantum physics how the word god spoke in fact even we'll go on and see this we're going to go to our next ver verse and see what it says that's in romans 
8, 26 through 28 in the New King James Version. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, all things in that case is prayer in all things. When you pray correctly, you pray correctly, all things work together for the good of God. Not just everything, life just doesn't line up because we pray or we God makes it happen. No, we it happens because of our prayer. Right, because when, when for example, the child and the mother are killed by a drunk driver, I've heard people say, oh, well, all works for the good of God. Well, no, that's not good. No, that's not. God did also, not. Also, even in... in when what was it? The guy got somebody uh, got healed in the in the and then they brought him before and said, "Who is who? Who did this? Is this is is his parents or him the sinner here or caused the, the guy to be born blind from birth?" And he Jesus said, "Neither. It was to the will of God, so that no, the, will the will of God, God. would no, be the glory of God. It the glory of God. God, not the will of God. Not I'm sorry. God. Yeah. I'm trying to get it there." <laughs> But we can't do that because we can't pay baseball games with Yeah, football. we can't. You can't just try you gotta to put know it the truth and so the truth will you set why you free. Does, you can't just, if you're not sure, go look it up. Right. We, so gotta, I should have the scripture. I'm sorry. Yeah, so he chose the scripture. He had but it looked I, up. I thought it was a good example as well that Jesus said it was for us to take care of, basically, by the will of God. Yeah, but that wasn't kind of where it was going. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's keep, okay. keep going your direction. <laughs> well, that's not surprising because we, we do that a lot. I, I was talking about things that happen that really Satan, Satan is the one who comes to steal, uh, steal, kill, and destroy. So when something happens and we would call it a disaster, it's not, it's not good. We can't say that all things work for the good of God. It, he's telling us, all things when we pray and we're attuned to God and we're his child and we're working in righteousness, then it will all work. So that's back to our last lesson when we did the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though you walk through the valley. Well, maybe that's not the right one either. I may be off like you, but like a thousand fall. That's, I think, the 91st Psalm. Right. A thousand fall on your right hand and 10,000 on your left. No evil will become nigh your dwelling. Now, that would be the good of God happening because if I prayed and if I didn't know how to pray, just like the verse says, the Holy Spirit, because I can speak in tongues, will give me groanings, the right thing, like, and it will just cause the right thing to happen. So even if you don't know what to pray, because I had someone once say, well, I knew a good person and they prayed and they died. And I, I do know that happens, but I know it's not God. That's the whole God life. didn't cause them to die. Because there's kind of like in prayer and healing, there's kind of three players in this. There's Jesus who died on the cross and he's already done all his part. He died and it says we are and then it was we were. So he's completed all the things he's going to do for us. So he's got it up there. It's like a present and we need to receive it and open it. And then, we need to do our due diligence. Right. And then we have Satan who definitely is trying to steal the word out of you, try to do anything destructive, steal, kill, or destroy. And, and to try to get you off the word, word and get some soulish idea to replace the word of God. Right. And then there's you who is smart, knows the word of God, sows the word, which the word is the seed, sows it, and you water the word, you ask in prayer with the right way, you study the word, you see how Jesus prays, you pray like him, and you receive your healing, because right. he's already Ro done all he's going to do. Romans 10, 17. Right. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, how do you get faith? You, get, you know the word of God. Right. And you might say to me, well, 
how do I know that that's what I'm supposed to do? How, because I think a lot of people are keep wanting God to do it all. Like God, you need to, we do need to pray. It said ask. So it could be like a parent or child. You say, mom, can I have my birthday present? And Jesus, I want my healing. And you can ask him for healing, but then you receive it and you start thanking God for the healing. Right. You find the scripture that matches. Time is not an essence here. Right. So we're going to go to our favorite, or at least your favorite scripture now. It's really one he always... Oh, I love it. this one. Right. And it, But it really why it's so important. It's not us telling you. It's not your pastor Jesus telling, is telling you. you. Telling That's you what... your commission. But <laughs> Oh, you said that. No, Jesus said it. Right. So this is, this is why we know like an... When you look at like Paul and people want to say, well, Paul had an eye problem, which we've already taught you. It was really a vision. They wanted him to have their the vision, vision about, of their Judaism. Right. But and so he didn't have that problem. We do know he had an affliction, which could be of, of your mind. And we do know Satan probably caused the ship to be sunk and the viper to bite him. But fortunately, he did know this command of God because he didn't die. Yeah, obviously, so seeing, he goes... He shook it off and it acted like it didn't happen almost. Right. So we, we, and we know at the end of Acts, it says the last two years of his life, he lived peacefully without harassment. Of yeah, the there was no government harassment. Because God said, my grace is sufficient. And our, the grace is sufficient for you. The grace is sufficient for me. It's sufficient for everybody. Because we know this, because we go back to Jesus's own word. This is the last words he said, he, well, before we get to this verse, he told us to be born again, make him the Lord of our life. And then we're going right. to, now that we're, we are, we're a Christian, this is our command throughout eternity till he returns, and what you, we all need to do. So we'll see what it is. And you, and you do your due diligence and you be uh, compliant to the word of God. He is transferring the power to us. In Mark 16, 17 through 19. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And it. And if they drink any deadly thing or deadly, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Christ ascends to the God's right hand then. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, of, of God, the Father. Right. And he delegated it all to us. We have the responsibility as the body of Christ. We're, he, we're, we're sitting at the right hand and we have no, all No, we're the, not sitting at the right hand. I'm not at the right hand of God. He is. Well, he is, but we sit with him because we, we are the body of no, Christ. We, we, it says that. We're not sitting with him right now. Well, I think we in a way him. we are. We, got, we use, we use all the power. Authority. He's transferred the power to us, and we need to take the responsibility of taking that power and using it to the benefit of the kingdom of God. And so what are we using it for? We're using it for the kingdom of God to be manifest. No, but what manifest, are we using it to do? To do his will. Right. We're using it to... To, we're going to speak with new tongues. We're going to cast out demons. If we have any poison, it will not harm us any form. Right. And we lay hands on the sick. sick. And they'll recover. So what we have to say about this is everybody wants to do the Paul thing. But if we're going to do the Paul thing and say God said, well, you're sick, Paul. And yeah. Can, and like, we, no. And we, did, we said no because we said no. three times that he, my, my grace is sufficient. But, that doesn't mean no. Right. So either Paul's wrong and Paul thought God said no. And you may think he said no, but he didn't. He said, my grace is sufficient. Or Jesus lied to us. And then the whole thing falls apart. Because Jesus said, I can lay hands on him and pray. And what happens? He's recovers. Well, I can lay hands on him and cast out demons. Right. Or I could have poison. And, it, and and I, I know that they can't kill me. <laughs> right. They can't kill me. Right. Poison can't kill you. Yeah. Right. And, and we well the the part where we're bringing up is it's kind of an odd thing. We'll just tell what's been in the news. Could be true. Could not be. Check it out yourself. Um, it says of uh, people who are in mortuaries doing 
the embalming and well, I guess they must take out the blood when they embalm you say that 50% of the people that are now dying have a strange component in their blood, well, like, which uh, has occurred just since 2020. Coagulated blood. Something different happening to their blood. So we, we've got this answer. If it was something poisonous that happened to be put in their blood, why there's this issue. I'm not trying to be tell you why it is. You, uh, you need out. to say, but, Lord, but, thank but you, it, Father, that I I'm, agree with Mark 16, 17 through 19. Right, that it, it's not going to harm me. It's, it's not going to harm me. I have clean in Jesus blood. name. I have clean blood. Another, uh, another right. issue that came up, and this is from Australia. They said there's been a lot of sudden deaths. Um, a 20% increase just since 2020. We're not telling you why it happened. It's up to you to determine why it happened. What you, what you think might be the cause of all this change. The life expectancy of the United States has gone down. Why is that? I mean, it, it's the reason why is because young people are dying unexpectedly because if it was a hundred year old people our life expectancy would not go down but because younger people are dying it's making the longevity because they add up everybody that dies and and divide it by the number of people and they come up with an expectancy of life but we don't have to have that problem because god himself promised us at least 70 years that the minimum and 120 at the higher side, so now, redeemed from the curse of the law, right? Which is what and we started with. And all this with. stuff that he, he told us to deal with is a curse of the law, the right. devil. Right. So on the back uh, behind me, you see Jesus, and he rose from the dead. Right. And the Jesus six, rose and from the dead. And how did he do it? And that's a real picture of Jesus. Right. And how did he do it? The spirit that dwelled in Jesus raised the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, me, every. Christian. All by, born again and Christian. so we all have the opportunity for health and healing. We need to learn how to do it, study our Bible, and do what Jesus said. And it's not redeemed. what I said. He said, lay hands on the sick, pray they for them. They shall recover. recover. It didn't say they might or some of them will. It said they shall be, they shall recover. Right. So, and so if you believe it, I believe it. It comes to fruition. Two or more gathered together, Matthew uh, 18, 19. Right. It so shall it's real, become. Right. It's like the lady with the issue of the blood. She said, if I can touch, but touches him, I shall be healed. And he said her faith made her whole. So we can say the same thing. We can reach out and touch the healing power of Jesus, which he did on the cross, receive it, and give God the glory. So we're going to leave you with that. Uh, our, our, our big motto is truth. It's truth wins. Truth wins. Got truth it. wins. Truth uh, wins. Uh, I'm on the edge of the thing, so he can do truth wins. Truth wins. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, listen to this many times. You Tell shall your know friends. the truth. And then if you're thinking, oh, well, I don't know about what they say. It's not about what we said. It's what Jesus said. Go look in your Bible. Look up all the healing scriptures. Read them. See how he healed. He healed them all. 17 times is recorded, and he Healed them all. It didn't say he went, except in his own hometown yeah, where there was unbelief. unbelief. So don't have so unbelief. So if you don't believe it, it ain't happening. Right, because <laughs> I had someone ask me, well, do you need more people to pray, not more people? And I said, well, it probably depends what the Holy Spirit tells you. Jesus at one point kicked everybody out but the three disciples. Uh, sometimes he only prayed himself. Sometimes when they wanted Peter out of prison, it was a whole group of people praying. So... Each circumstance will have its own kind of right. things, and the Holy Spirit knows what you and should do. And most of the time, Jesus just commanded. He didn't go up and pray. He said, it is basically, he said, get up and be walk. healed. Right. Or he said, get up and take your bed. Well, or in the case of the woman with issue of blood, she just believed and she received. So she we, received it, and he's going, well, who touched me? But you don't, you don't even have to do that. I remember praying for our church that people be just healed sitting in, in, the, in the service and they started just getting healed just yeah, so if you like, reach out to we, god we later on months later we talked to the girl i remember that she goes i just got healed sitting in the service right so you can it was a be, major problem she was dying right yeah. so you can have you can just be healed sitting in the service it's mostly that you know the word you use it correctly and you believe and 
God wants to have you well. That's He died on the cross for that. I mean, yeah. That's a big price to pay. Yeah. Anyway, that's probably enough, enough. of that. We, you just go read your word and he'll convince you. Ask him to show yeah. you in your heart. Get excited oh, about the word. Right, because we I was reading today, because um, I'm reading the Bible all the way through and not the part uh, in a year, and it kind of does the Old Testament, and then it does part of the new, the Middle Testament, I call Psalms, kind of Middle Testament, and then it does some new, and it was talking about, um, now I've told them all of what I was doing. <laughs> it's like, okay, what was I doing that for? Uh, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. That would be good. <laughs> Could you tell me what I was thinking? Uh, it was... I wasn't saying anything. It was in Matthew. I was, you said, no, it was Psalms, uh, you said. No, but I, was, but I, I first started in... I was talking about Joseph and all the good things that happened with him, how he got out of prison and oh, kind yeah. of up. But I was thinking, oh, it, it's really in, it was in the, it was in Matthew just as all about healing. I think if you want healing, there's so much healing in Matthew. Oh, I was talking about the parables. That's where I'm going. The parables, with okay. God, thank you, Holy Spirit. You brought me back to where I was going. Right. The, the, and that's probably what, a good example of the parables, like they, they had ears that couldn't hear and eyes that couldn't see. So I'm, I'm praying that all of your eyes are open so you won't go back to something that you were taught by someone that's incorrect. The Holy Spirit will open your eyes and you'll look and you'll realize, yes, yes. God heals every time. God heals every time. God is our healer. Really, in essence, if you read it and know it well enough, you know he's already healed you. He's already healed he's you. He's your it's healer, just you, right. You... You are the barrier, and you just need to do your due diligence, and you're healed. Right, or, or Satan. It's like the lady sitting do. in the audience at, right. at church. She just got healed because she got enough word in her to the point that it just happened. Right. Because God it's overwhelms good. the evil. So remember, truth wins. Truth, truth is the word. It's the winds. Truth wins. And we'll... Well, and you, you shall know the truth, and the truth, truth shall, shall set, set you, you free. free. And we'll see you next week.